Hi folks, welcome to RJ Impact. This is another video in the Christian Smart series where I'll go through some more detail on the timeline of events. I'm intending to do another short video on the events of the fateful night of her disappearance and specifically the route that the witnesses and Smart took through and around the Cal Poly campus to the point of her disappearance. In that video, I'll also show the geography of the campus in relation to the various houses that police have searched over the years. If you like this video, then please don't forget to subscribe and if you hit the notification bell, then you won't miss out on future episodes in this series. Your subscriptions are very much appreciated by the author. To accompany the background video, the following will go through the timeline from Kirsten's birth through to the fateful events in 1996 and what happened in the quarter of a century from then until today. Our first entry on the timeline, February the 20th, 1977, when Kristin was born in Augsburg, Bavaria, West Germany. When she was a child, she moved with her family to Stockton, California, and in June 1995, she graduates from Lincoln High School in Stockton with plans to attend California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo, in the fall. For a brief period before then, she worked at a lifeguard and camp counsellor at Camp Mukela, Hawaii, and then in 1996 enrolled in Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo. On May the 25th, 1996, she made her way to an off-campus party. Two days later, Monday, May the 27th, Christine's mother says that they got a call from Cal Poly's campus police asking if Christine was with them. On May the 27th, Paul Flores was arrested in connection with a DUI offence. A mugshot was taken, showing him to have a black eye. At the very end of May 1996, Flores was first interviewed by the Cal Poly police. On June the 10th, 1996, the police searched Flores' campus rooms, although these had already been cleaned by the campus staff after the students had moved out, and they got positive feedback from cadaver dogs. At that time, Reuben and Susan Flores, Paul's parents, were living at 710 White Court. The property has been searched multiple times, starting in July 1996, and investigators have said they now suspect that a body was buried under the deck, but has since been moved. Also in 1996, 529 East Branch Street was also searched. Now this was used as a rental property until Susan Flores moved in after separating from her husband and has been searched at least three times. This was let to tenants about a month after Christine disappeared and they found an earring that Christine's mother says is very like one owned by Christine. The police lost the earring. <laughs> In 1996 also, investigators searched what they called a confined area near the community of Husana, about 10 miles east of Arroyo Grande. Susan's house was also searched in March 1997, about nine months after Christine disappeared, but on that occasion nothing was found. In late 1997, the Smarts put a billboard up in their yard, which has pretty much stayed up since then. Also, the Smarts family filed a $40 million wrongful death lawsuit against Paul Flores. In November 1997, Flores was deposed and refused to answer questions, citing the Fifth Amendment during the deposition. On January the 1st, 1999, the Christine Smart Campus Security Act was made into law. June the 19th, 2000, members of the San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Department and the FBI searched the grounds of Susan Flores' house in Arroyo Grande on 529 East Branch Street, and this was the one that was used as the rental property until Susan Flores moved in after separating from her husband. May the 25th, 2002, Smart's family declared Christine legally dead. 2003, Smart's parent, in an interview with KCRA3, said that they are hopeful one day they will find her body. Christine's mother said, It's a giant jigsaw puzzle, and we probably have a third of the puzzle filled in right now, but we're continually adding to the pieces, so I have every reason to believe she will be found. In 2004, the Smart family sought donations to keep billboards up along Highway 101 to maintain awareness of the case. In 
2005, Denise and Stan Smart, Christine's parents, filed a civil case of wrongful death against Floris. In around 2006 or 2007, the Floris family filed a lawsuit in return against the Smarts family for emotional distress. 2011, Ian Parkinson became the San Luis Obispo County Sheriff and requested a complete review of all physical evidence taken in relation to Smarts' missing person case. In 2016, cadaver dogs trained to detect human decomposition were deployed by the FBI to search on and near the Cal Poly campus. One of these areas was a hillside above the campus, and in 2016, earth movers carved into the soil there, but did not turn up human remains. We are hopeful that this will lead to the finding of Kristen or evidence that will bring closure to the family and ultimately to the community. That lead led us to uh, this location, Cal Poly. We brought in specialty human remains detection dogs uh, brought in from the FBI. In summary, between 2011 and 2020, the Sheriff's Office investigators and forensic specialists assigned to Ms. Smart's case executed 18 search warrants, submitted 37 items that were collected in the early days of the case for DNA testing, recovered 140 new items of evidence, and conducted 91 interviews, all in the same period. On September the 6th, 2016, officials from the Obispo County Sheriff's Office announced they were investigating a new lead in the case. Cadaver dogs from the FBI were brought in and investigators spent approximately four days excavating an area on the Cal Poly campus and after three days items were found at three dig sites on a hillside near Smart's dormitory. On September the 30th, 2019, musician Chris Lambert released a series of 10 podcast episodes about the case, which have been widely credited with keeping the investigation alive. Also in 2019, several new witnesses were interviewed, and this led to Sheriff's detectives securing a court order to intercept and monitor Paul Flores' cell phone and text messages. January 2020, a new billboard was put up in Arroyo Grande. January the 29th, 2020. The police department confirmed that two trucks owned by Flores had been taken into evidence. February the 5th, 2020. Search warrants were served for, in quotes, specific items of evidence at four different locations. Two in San Luis Obispo, one in Washington State and also at a home in Los Angeles County. And Paul Flores was briefly detained during the search. From around January 2020, we heard Paul's mother Susan telling Paul, The other thing I need you to do is to start listening to the podcast. I need you to listen to everything they say so that we can punch holes in it. Um, wherever we can punch holes. Maybe we can't. You, you're the one that can tell me. February the 4th, 2020, a search of Paul Flores' San Pedro home, where San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's investigators seized electronic devices, that featured videos showing Flores having sex with seemingly incapacitated women. They also uncovered videos in a folder labelled Practice that featured women wearing ball gags and in other fetish positions. Flores was also in possession of Tramadol and Flexeril, known as date rape drugs. On March the 15th, 2021, the County Sheriff's Office undertook a search that included ground penetrating radar, and that technology uncovered a soil disturbance under the deck as well as four soil samples that tested positive for human blood. An April excavation also tested positive for blood. Authorities also uncovered fibres consistent with the colour clothing Smart was last seen wearing. In March 2021, investigators from the County Sheriff's Office searched Ruben Flores' property in Arroyo Grande, California. During that investigation, they also used cadaver dogs and ground-penetrating radar. 
April the 13th, 2021. After an investigation that spanned nearly a quarter of a century, the authorities announced that two California men, Paul Flores, 44, and his father, Ruben Flores, 80, had been arrested in connection with Christine Smart's disappearance. Paul Flores was taken into custody in San Pedro, Los Angeles, and was charged with murder. Ruben Flores was arrested at his home on the same day and was charged with being an accessory after the fact. April 14th, 2021, the day after the arrests, Dan Dow, the San Luis Obispo County District Attorney, said that Paul Flores had in quotes, caused the death of Miss Smart while in the commission of or attempted rape. Ruben Flores helped to hide her remains, he said. April the 15th, 2021, the first court appearances for the pair, Paul and Ruben, and they didn't tend to please. The Smart's family were quoted as saying, after nearly 25 years of waiting, today's delay in the arraignment process is not unexpected or surprising. Make no mistake, we have begun the final quest to bring justice for Kristen. We know we are in good hands with the San Luis Obispo County District Attorney's Office, and we will wait patiently for the process to commence. April the 19th, 2021, Rubin and Paul both plead not guilty. Paul Flores isn't granted bail, with Judge Craig B. Van Ruyen saying that his release could result in, in quotes, great bodily harm to the public. Rubin will be released on bail that he can afford. On July the 14th, 2021, the two men made their first courtroom appearance where Judge Ryan denied the district attorney's motion to add two rape charges to the case against Paul Flores. July the 15th, 2021. Previously sealed documents relating to the case that became available to the public explain the rape charges that were attempted to be added to Paul Flores' case. The unsealed documents include two claims from 2011 and 2017 that Flores raped two women while they were drunk in San Pedro. It also expounds on several other alleged rapes as well as unwanted sexual advances. August the 2nd, 2021, local media reported that Denise Smart, Miss Smart's mother, spoke at a preliminary hearing where the judge was deciding whether prosecutors had established probable cause to proceed to trial. Other witnesses included the students who were at the party. On August the 3rd, a close friend of Smart's from college, Stephen Fleming, tells the court that Flores had interacted with Smart before the party they both attended prior to her disappearance. On one occasion, he says Flores was lurking in the lobby of Smart's dorm at 1am. On August the 6th, 2021, we had further unsealed court documents and it showed the extent that law enforcement had looked into Flores over the years. Apparently 48 search warrants involving wire traps and GPS tracking and a search of Flores' former Cal Poly dorm room. The defence wants to suppress some of these searches though, claiming that they were done illegally or without warrants. The prosecution upholds the validity of the searches, particularly including one of Flores' dorm room, which was the one done after he moved out. August the 10th, 2021, Flores' defence team issued Chris Lambert with a subpoena to serve as a witness in the Superior Court on August the 30th, and the defence told Lambert he shouldn't be allowed back into the courtroom where he'd been covering the hearing, as he is now a potential witness. On August 11th, 2021, Flores defence team moved to recuse the district attorney's office from the Smart case because the prosecutor, Pouvrel and others have been seen wearing purple clothing, Smart's favourite colour. On August the 25th, 2021, the judge rules that the district attorney cannot be disqualified for wearing purple clothing. September the 8th, 2021, podcaster Lambert will not be called to the stand during the Christine Smart murder hearing. The judge ruled that, that to have the podcaster testify would, in quotes, have a chilling effect on the media's ability to do their job. September the 20th, 2021, a witness called Jennifer Hudson took the stand at the hearing and she told the court that in 1996, when she was only 17, Floris laughingly told her that he had, in quotes, taken care of Smart. She, however, feared for her life, so did not tell anyone at the time, or for years after. I was afraid I'd end up missing or buried, she said. Apparently, Floris had told her he'd put Smart under a skateboard ramp in Arroyo Grande. 
After the hearing on September the 22nd, the judge ruled that there was sufficient evidence for the case to proceed to trial. And that's pretty much where we are today. The trial for Ruben and Paul is scheduled to start on April the 25th, 2022, which is about two months away from the time of this recording. If you have liked this video, then please don't forget to hit the like button. As I mentioned earlier, I'll publish another short video on the route that the witnesses and Smart took on the night of their disappearance. And then I'll cover the trial of Paul and Rubin Flores in turn if you want. So you don't miss out, hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell and you'll get a notification when they're published. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.